it's arrived my treadmill is here so let's go and get it set up and uh, let's see how we get on with our first day on a Spirax walking pad first off this thing looks absolutely huge in the box you can't really tell from here but uh, they dropped it off at the door and then I was going to take it upstairs myself I struggled to get this up the stairs <laughs> It's so heavy compared to what I thought it was going to be. I guess weight means that it's probably better quality, uh, but I finally got it up here, so let's get on with unpacking it. These treadmills come really well packaged. There's lots of polystyrene around it to protect it and it was in perfect condition when it arrived. It comes with the instruction booklet and there is also the Allen key for adjusting the belt and there is a small bottle of oil so that you can lubricate the belt so that it runs smoothly. And this is one of the things that I was um, concerned about was the pros and cons of using this was maintenance so that's really great they had that it also comes with the remote the remote requires two triple a batteries neither of which i have so i have to go out and get a set of those but i just nipped over the road and that's that sorted so there's the oil bottle there and the instructions are really easy to understand really easy to use. There is a warranty with this treadmill. Uh, it mentioned a warranty card which I couldn't find so I'm going to message them and see if I need to provide any proof to either get the warranty card or if I need to just let them know that I've bought it and what the, the details are on it. So I've got my batteries, so let's put our batteries in the remote and then we are effectively ready to go once it is unpacked and plugged in because it doesn't require any other setup. People have complained that they come with really short connection leads. I don't think it's that bad, but also I, where I wanted to put mine wasn't near a, a plug socket anyway. So I've run an extension cable uh, down the side and it's really tucked away. So that's all fine. Um, I just wanted to double check that, um, that it was all in good working condition and with no damage before I connected it up and started to use it but that all looks fine there. They come really well packaged and it was in good condition. Although they're quite heavy, you can stand them up on their sides and they also have wheels at the front so you can wheel them into position. So here I am going to put the oil on the belt to start with and I'm just putting that down in case I drip oil on my rug. Um, they say you should lift up the belt and put the oil in that way but the belt's quite tight and I didn't want to fiddle around with it too much so what I decided to do is just to tip the treadmill on its side and drip the oil down a little bit into the gap And I did that on both sides just to make sure there was a bit of oil. You don't need much and you're not supposed to do it too often but it just helps to lubricate the belt and help it run properly. And 
now I'm just going to make the space for it. So this is my standing desk, which is my ironing board, and under there I've had my printer for a long time, and the printer's going to have to go somewhere else now because this is where, for now at least, my um, walking pad is going to go because this is where my desk goes. I'm hoping I can play around with this space a little bit as time goes on, but for now this is where it's going to live and as you can see the wheels work really well and it fits really well between the legs of my ironing board standing desk and I've run the cable down there so that's all nice and neat and tidy. And that's a nice height for my laptop which is on top of my standing desk which you'll see in a minute. And I'm just going to run this for one minute because it says once you've put the oil on just run it for one minute at low speed to let the oil get right round the belt. There's the LEDs on. And away it goes. I dug out some trainers that I haven't used in a long time. I'm going to use these as my indoor trainers. They seem quite comfortable at the moment, although I don't think they're going to last that long because I've replaced these because they were falling apart. But for indoor, for this, I think they'll be fine. So this is my first time getting on a treadmill. Let's take off one of my jumpers because I know that I'm going to get warm really fast because I'm actually doing exercise. And I've got a, a, a YouTube video on my laptop there and I'm this is my first time on this, so I'm just getting a feel for it. It feels a bit weird, and I'm just doing it at a slow speed because I just want to check that I am okay with my um, balance, and I was concerned that this belt was going to be really small and I might fall off the side or the back, but actually it's perfect for my size. I don't have a particularly long stride. I'm five foot four and this is a very nice size for me. So I think that is something like a, a, a two kilometer an hour speed. Look, hands in pockets already, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I haven't been on a treadmill in such a long time, but I used to love the treadmills at the gym. I've got a pedometer on my phone, so my phone is in my pocket and that's measuring my steps fine. I'm not too worried about measuring anything else, I just want to know I'm doing the necessary number of steps each day that I want to do. Uh, as I'm walking along I'm just balancing myself on the wall at the side because I'm just checking to see if that belt is moving because this is the first time it's run it might slip to the side and you don't want that to happen because you can end up damaging the side of the belt on the side of the, um, of the machine. So it's time to rejig my desk area. So I need somewhere to put my printer. And I have this elevated section that I use on the top of my ironing board standing desk because the ironing board's still too low for working on. And I've had this, which is one of those um, adjustable trays that you can put on your lap in bed sort of thing. And I've been using it like that for ages. The legs go up and down on this. So what I'm going to do is just clear off this area, which really needs a clean out. I've been dumping paperwork under here for quite a while and I'm so lazy. So now I'm going to have to have a spring clean. And I'm just going to adjust the legs. If I adjust the legs upwards, I'm pretty sure that I can fit my printer underneath my laptop on the standing desk. And then it can be in perfect situ for whenever I need it. And I use my laptop printer quite often so I've got some printing I need to do first thing tomorrow I probably use it three or four days a week because I print labels for things that I've sold so particularly on vintage or where I'm buying parcel labels on parcel to go 
or with Royal Mail click and drop on Etsy. So I don't want the printer to be packed away and me having to pull it out every time. I really want it to be in situ. So I'm just going to sort out all these piles of paperwork. I'm going to move it aside for the moment, tidy up this desk and then I will sort through that paperwork later on today. And with those legs up on my adjustable table, it's a perfect fit. I wish I'd thought of this before and it'll stop me dumping more paperwork underneath my desk. I'll have to be more organised in future. So here I am. This is Sperax walking pad at home treadmill, day one, hour one. I was really worried about the size of that when I got that box. I dragged it up my stairs, it was so heavy. This thing isn't particularly light, but once it's out the box, it's, once it's set up and in the room it's far more compact it fits really nicely under my ironing board standing desk between the legs there's even going to be plenty of room for me to add uh, a small incline and I think this is going to be easier to use than I thought I was worried that the treadmill the actual belt was going to be a bit small because I know that some people say that they find them too narrow and I think if you had a really long stride there probably would be but it's I don't find it I'm only five foot four so my stride isn't that massive I'm unfit so I have plenty of scope for this now I'm not having any problems walking looking at the screens at the same time I thought that might be a problem but I have quite a lot of experience with treadmills over the years I am used to working from a standing desk so I'm used to this upright position so this is really easy the speed actually is really good I've only got it on two That's what two, two uh, is it kilometers per hour I think these run in this one I think goes up to about five there's no way I'm going to need to go up to five it's not that noisy. I know a lot of people say when they're on hard floors they're quite noisy and if you have neighbours below, I have neighbours below who are noisy already so I'm not bothered. Um, I do have carpet on my floor but it's really thin carpet. So there's enough air getting underneath the unit where the vents and the fans are so it won't overheat. I'm keeping an eye on the belt because the belts can shift particularly when you first set them up. If the belt goes too far to the side, it'll start to catch on the framework 
and then you will basically shred your belt and then you've ruined it. So that's why when I first set this up, I looked at some of the pros and cons and one of the things that a lot of people said when you first set them up, run the oil under the belt, so that just helps lubricate the belt and make sure that your belt is central. Well, it was central when it started. It looks like it's starting to move very slightly over to the right, but I will keep an eye on it. And it does say in the book that you should readjust the belt or check the belt every 300 kilometers. I think I might need to pull this one over a little bit. It's just very, very slowly drifting to the right, but there's no surprise, it's come straight out the box. This is good. So that's 2.5. This remote is brilliant. Two AAA batteries. On and off, you can put memory so you can program it. I'm not bothered about that. And then up and down for the speed and you're away. It's got an LED on the front. I'm not worried about that because I have a pedometer on my phone and all I'm worried about with this is counting the steps because I want to hit my 10,000 a day. This is really easy to do. When I'm standing here, not physically working, and I'm just watching, say, a YouTube video, killing two birds with one stone. And when the flat gets cold, this is gonna boost my temperature. I really feel quite warm. It's only about 14 in the flat. I've had to take a jumper off already. I've had two jumpers on. I've dug out a pair of old trainers that I haven't worn in a long time to use as my indoor trainers because I don't really want to wear my outdoor ones on, on this and indoors. And they seem to be comfortable. They've got some support because I wanted support. One of the problems I had that is that I've had a standing desk for a long time. And over time, I've noticed that I'm begin, beginning to get a lot of pain in my feet. And I think that's because I'm standing on a very hard floor for hours and hours every day. And I'm getting heel pain and what have you. So the actual, actual physical act of moving properly, walking properly, whilst standing up, is going to be better for my feet. I'm getting a real normal action in. So that's, um, this is day one. Now the other thing I'm going to monitor is how much energy this costs. I took a meter reading on my electric meter before I started using this today. And I am going to take another reading in seven days and see what an average seven days looks like. Um, I have been switching off my two countertop freezers between 10 p.m. and 10 a.m. That saves me a point about 0.85 of a kilowatt per hour unit per 24 hour period. So that definitely works. So we'll see how much goes back on by using this in an average week. If I don't see a significant increase in my usage, as I get used to this, I will start walking faster. I just want to be sure I'm getting my balance right. I want to be sure that that belt is nice and central and just put this through its paces and make sure that it's working properly. It does come with a warranty couldn't find the warranty but um, I'm gonna have another look and then I might message them because you know this costs money and I want this to be working properly so let's put this up to three three is a nice speed I can walk faster but this feels pretty good Now one of the things they tell you you should also do is walking after you've eaten is good for rebalancing your blood sugar levels after you've eaten. So 
I had my main meal at lunchtime, so I've just had my lunch. It's now about one o'clock, I think. So I'm going to walk for a bit. Walk off some of that blood sugar things that are going on. And I will get into a routine of when works best for me to walk on this. I can imagine dividing it up into say three sessions. So a morning walk, an after lunch, and then an after dinner, but it, I'll see how that works. There will be days when I don't need to use it as much because I will go out and do cleans. And an average clean will be less than 3,000 steps. But that's 3,000 steps I don't need to do when I get home. And that's gonna save me electricity. So it's in my own best interests to also do as much going out exercise as possible because it's gonna cost me less to run this. But we'll see how it looks in seven days. And I will report back on my energy usage. We'll see how we get on. But this feels pretty good at the moment. <laughs> and balancing is actually really easy. But I'm used to treadmills and I've always wanted this. So, that's my latest update. I will keep you posted on how I get on. Uh, I did take a weight measurement this morning and I've put on 12 pounds since March. And there are so many reasons for that, but I'm pretty sure that increasing my step count from 3,000 a day at a push to 10,000 has got to help with that. At three, I don't feel out of breath. I'm not that unfit. But I can feel that my breathing is up a bit. I can feel that I'm getting warmer. So I am clearly going to be burning some energy. And if I don't change my eating habits, I'm not a massive eater anymore. I'm really careful about snacks. I've cut down on my ultra processed food. I've cut down on my sugar. I drink my two litres of water a day. If I don't change my eating habits and simply ramp up my step count, that's got to be a good thing. So, I'll get back to you in seven days and let you know how I get on. Catch you in seven days.